Yeah, you're doing such a great job, Mount. Let's see if you can keep it rolling. Is CU 2018-02 Deep South Sanitation LLC, sir. Yes, sir. This is the other conditional use request. This is for the <coughs> southern half of the property. That was an earlier agenda item where it was requested for rezoning from ER to M2. Yes, sir. Um, in this case, the applicant is not the owner, but is a um, respected tenant there, Deep South Sanitation, requesting conditional use approval for two things. Under M2 zoning, um, they're like wanting to have a solid waste hauling operation as well as a solid waste transfer facility. I mean, details of all of that are there in your packet. Um, in your packet also is a site plan that shows the existing building um, and a few other site features. But as you see, this is the least area, which is half of a 10.88 acre parcel. So the subject property here is 5.44 acres. Um, the large industrial building that has been there since the 50s. Um, there is a concrete truck loading area. That is the applicant's transfer facility. At the work, work session, you may recall, we talked at length about what a typical transfer facility is for solid waste. And this is not. But it is something that requires a state permit. The state had no other category to uh, place them under. But they did receive the EPD permit back in November for a transfer facility. And of course, they will be subject to all the rules and regulations of the state for that. And a copy of that permit is there in your packet. Um, the city also has some supplemental standards for solid waste transfer facilities. Um, so in the abundance of caution, the applicant is also <coughs> requesting a listing of variances to some of those standards. And this is really as a footnote for you. Um, those variance requests are going to the Zoning Board of Appeals at their meeting next week. So this agenda item is just for the conditional use permit, which deals with the use of the property, not so much the supplemental standards. Um, subject property, again, this is the view from Gill Harbin Industrial Boulevard. It sits a good distance back off the road. There's the view from their north driveway. Um, closer up, some features of the property. This is the existing building. And that structure in the front there, that's the former kiln from when the concrete pipe manufacturer was operating there several decades ago. Um, another view of the building, you can see there's plenty of room. This is a truck well, which is where the applicant transfers solid waste from their, I guess, the fleet of five, I think they're only using three collection trucks, into a larger truck uh, by virtue of um, backing their garbage trucks into a trailer, depositing their load, and then back driving out of it. So what they have done is they've lowered a grade well for the larger truck to back into so that the garbage tr trucks can back up into it. It's quite a fascinating operation that they have. But this is their transfer facility. Like we talked about um, previously at the work session, they are not accepting solid waste from others. It is simply for their purposes only to transfer from one vehicle to another. And then it's that larger truck that goes on to the landfill. Um, this transfer facility, even as you see it, is required to meet all current regs from the state that includes collecting of leachate that may drip out of the trucks. It is gathered into this well where there is a sump pump. It is pumped into a holding tank, which you see there on the back right. It looks like a white box. And from there, it is properly disposed of as the state requires. Um, here's a different view of that dock looking the other, the other direction. This is actually looking south toward Gill Harbor. Uh, but because there's no building here, you don't really see this from the road. It's just <coughs> a truck well. Then it's empty. Um, adjacent properties, this is the County Public Works Center, recycling center right across the street. Um, the county property, which has some stockpiles of material of their own. I mean, and like we talked about under the rezoning case, there's a lot of industrial uses all around here. Um, planning or staff is recommending approval of this after finding consistent with the conference plan and the conditional use review criteria, but subject to six conditions they are in the packet. The first one is approval shall be granted in the name of the applicant only for a solid waste hauling operation with an accessory solid waste transfer station in M2 zoning, and all this in accordance with the submitted site plan. The hauling operation aspect of the business shall remain the primary use of the property. Like we talked about the work session, staff has no issue with the what we view as the accessory use of a, a transfer station as long as it is indeed that. It's a relatively small operation by comparison, 
and it is subordinate to the primary use of the property, which is solid waste hauling. Number two, the operation of facilities shall handle municipal solid waste or natural vegetation debris only and maintain compliance with appropriate EPD permit requirements. There shall be no handling of hazardous materials on the site. The accessory transfer facility shall be subject to all applicable LDR supplemental use standards for such facilities, except this may be otherwise approved as variances of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Number three, the solid waste transfer facility <coughs> shall be in the form of a truck-to-truck -truck transfer only, with only one truck loading dock that is outdoors or remains under a permitted structure. There shall be no deposition of municipal solid waste on the property. This differentiates it from the typical type transfer facility. Number four, the business shall utilize no more than ten garbage collection trucks, and these shall be parked overnight inside the existing building. Number five, the existing tree lines and other vegetation shall be maintained around the perimeter of the property so as to partially obscure visibility of the site. And lastly, conditional use approval shall expire for six months from the date of approval if the applicant has not obtained the city business license and all applicable permits and other necessary approvals by that date. Um, earlier today, I sent you an email. Um, it was a six-page item that we received from a local business that has some concerns about this proposed use. Um, I handed out hard copies of that to you at the meeting, but you did get it from the email. They are raising some concerns about some of these supplemental standards and their desire for the applicant to follow all of those to the letter. Do I answer any questions you may have? I got a quick question. On your conditions, you said 10 garbage collection trucks. Does that mean the total fleet can exceed 10 or Correct. 10 dumpings a day? 10 trucks. 10 trucks. And one truck to dump into. In other words, it allows a little room for expansion. They currently have a fleet of five vehicles. Okay. I'm told they only use three in operation. The others are more or less as backups. But they have one truck well. They take one full truck uh, five times a week to the length of basically once a day, Monday through Friday. Um, and like we talked about at the work session, there's plenty of room on the site. If they were to go beyond the approved conditions, we would need to come back through the public hearing process. you want like another well or what to just curious? Well, another well, or it's part of a trial run to see how this really operates long term. Um, currently, the site is very neat and clean, particularly for an industrial site. The building that you see there um, is actually larger than it looks, um, and it, but it's essentially a very large garage. Um, when I visited the site, walked through the building, the trucks were there, there was room for plenty more, but it was basically a garage. And I think one well, some additional trucks, gives them a little room to grow. I think that's just as fine as their request of how they're operating that. Any questions for staff, commissioners? There being none, is anyone here this evening wishing to speak in favor of this request? Come forward this time. Wishing to speak in favor of the request? Come forward this time. Did you deserve to take your name and address for the record, please? Kevin Hawks, 2741 Cooper Road, Lyon, Georgia. Good evening, sir. Good evening. As Matt showed you in the picture, there are, it's a very clean site, and uh, I am the property manager for Edward Jennings LLC, so I'm obviously have a stake in this guy's success there. But I can tell you for the year and a half or two years, I guess he's been there, he, he runs a very clean operation. There's no paper dripping around, and my job is monitor all that all the time. This guy is a very neat, clean operator. Uh, we're glad to have him as a He really does a good job and uh, certainly hope it's success. Any questions for presenting? Okay. I have one of those. I was like, I'm just curious, like on, on the waste to run off the mass and you have pumps and bomb and suck it in that, put it in that one big container. I'm just curious. I'm not aware of exactly how he operates, but I've seen the operation. He pumps out of that end of that. I'm just curious how often, how many times we get that done? It depends on how much it rains. It's how much it rains, too. So not so much lately. Mm -hmm. Right. But I'm sure that we all can speak more of that. 
Any questions for the commissioners? Mr. Thomas, thank you very much. Anyone else here wishing to speak in favor of this request on board this time? Anyone yes, wishing to speak in favor of this request? Any, sir? I not correct. This is not for a prospective tenant. 
This tenant's been there, from my understanding, over two years. In violation of the zoning, without a uh, business permit to operate on the property. If I'm mistaken on that, that's the information that I got from the city. So what they've done is, in violation of zoning laws and any subsequent variances or special uses that are allowed on the property, they go set up the business, they bring what they want on the property, and then I assume someone said, wait a minute, y'all aren't supposed to be out there operating this business for free. So the brakes were pumped at the very most. So now the, the zoning change, and I, I'm not objecting to the zoning. Most everything out there is owned either M1 or M2. Well, not most of it, but a, a, a fair percentage of it is. Um, if you look on the back side on Tucker Road where it actually addresses its DR10, you got EA, and you got the county owns the vast majority of it. It's an historical side note. We used to rent all that property west of the railroad tracks all the way back behind the Pepsi plant on both sides of the road when it was the old farm uh, uh, prison yard uh, that Mr. Patrick ran. And we ran hogs and cows on that property, and I put up 95% of the barbed wire fences and took them down when uh, we quit uh, running as many cows as we once had. But I went out there yesterday, and again, I'm not sure what's supposed to be out there. But my understanding, it was five dump trucks, trash dump trucks that were going to be used. And they were going to use one back-end tractor trailer to dump those in to move. Well, there's very little concrete out there except for that reverse ramp. That I, I, that's what I call it anyway. Like you're loading hogs or cows or anything, the truck goes underground. There's nothing around there that keeps any contaminants from going into the ground and into the groundwater. Now, I'm not saying there should be, but I'm saying that I do believe that it, we deserve the opportunity for you folks to know whether we should. Solid waste transfer stations, and I'm reading off the city document, normally triggers a development of regional impact review in accordance with state law. But because this is such a small operation, as it's been defined by everybody, that they decided that that wasn't necessary. Well, Mr. Starbird, I'm a businessman. I don't blame him one little bit. You ask him. Do you plan on this growing? Absolutely. I hope it will. So now they've got the recommendation of the city is to have it, uh, a maximum of 10 trucks. There are three tractor trailers out there today. Not one, not two, but three. I don't know how many dump trucks are in there because I didn't go in the building because it's not my place. It's only for their use, and I took a picture today when I was out there, and at the entrance of the gate off of industrial, not Tucker, but industrial, I think it was mentioned, they're not using this off Tucker Road. This is coming straight off of industrial. My understanding is using a driveway that the county owns. That it, these, it's popped out now for the tractor trailers and the heavy dump trucks going in and out of there. I got to pay my parking lot at my little law office on Slater Street. I don't know why they're able to drive in and out of there on dirt. But this is what the sign reads. No dumping of yard debris except on days drop site is open. You must check in at drop site before unloading of yard debris. No exceptions, please don't ask. There's yard debris out there, and I think it was shown on, on the site plan that you've got there, that if you put it in front of my house, you couldn't see my house. Now, I don't know if anybody's done any studies on vermin or anything else that's going to be out there when you've got trash trucks and then you've got places for critters to hide. But I can tell you in my experience, it at least deserves to pump the brakes a couple more times and find out what's going on out there. That pit that they pulled the truck back in, 
the holding tank, and I understand that it, it hadn't been built but a couple of times in the two years or however long they've had it out there, it's the size of a hot tub. <coughs> I don't know if y'all remember <coughs> what it's like to get a gully washer in July and August in South Georgia, but you can fill up a hot tub in a skinny minute. And so what they got out there is a pump about twice the size of my arm, the sub pump that's coming up, you know, dumping that into there with no concrete pad. So you've got contaminants on the tires down in that revert in that pit that whatever's falling out of there is getting all over the tires and the wheels and the parts of the truck that they're then pulling out and running up industrial boulevards. My understanding is the yard debris and the waste that they transfer or whatever they are doing here doesn't go to our landfill. My understanding is it goes to another county, which is fine. But I don't know why we would recommend the holding of, of residential waste on our property to then pay another county to take it and do something with it. Again, I know it sounds like I'm talking against it. I'm really not. I don't have enough information to make an informed, intelligent decision and talk to my sisters about it. And if I didn't come here today and it turned out bad, I'd have to answer to both of them. And I'd prefer not to have to do that until we get all the information. Um, again, I'm not objecting to the, the zoning, and I didn't get up here when that was going on. I don't know if we object to what's going on on the property. It has been for two years. I think that's very important. Would this have been approved? Would this have been recommended? Had somebody come up and said, we want to dump a bunch of trash over here on industrial boulevard? Maybe so. But it sure is going fast. And I understand a six-page document was provided by another property owner. I hadn't seen that either. I don't know if I'm entitled to to review that at some point, not certainly not this evening, but certainly would like to see what others concerns and see if the EPD needs to become involved into looking at this. Because if you look at that site map, my property's down here. We all know where water runs. And it's going to run straight across under the railroad tracks, straight across my property and then down into the creek, which is much to my chagrin been polluted and has now been cleaned up a lot in the last couple of years. And y'all are going to have an opportunity, if there is a spill, to have the state of Georgia back in here and everybody else wanting to know why we're putting, you know, having all that potential of seeking. One last point, and I know I'm close to my 10 minutes. We were going to develop the property adjacent to this, uh, it's been 10 or 15 years ago, and had EPD come down and look at it, and it was a chemical transport company. They were going to bring in 55-gallon drums of chemicals and house them there because we have a rail spur. We had to build, and I think it was either a 10 or 12-inch concrete rim around the entire building. So if one of those 55-gallon drums turned over, it wasn't going anywhere except in the concrete floor or the drains with something I else. Mean, you had to you know, have it engineered that way. Um, it, 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 the site looks like it has for several years, and I mean many, many, many years. I'm not, there's not paper flying around and blowing around all over the place, but I think there's enough concerns out there and enough questions that we need to have an opportunity before you, ladies and gentlemen, recommend. Uh, that it be the zoning be modified or the variance is granted. I'd be glad to answer any questions. I'm sorry I spoke so long. Any questions, Mr. Turner? I got one. Um, I'm looking where they've already done the EPA deal and, and the state of Georgia environmental protection has already been notified and there's another permit, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong on that, that I'm looking at another one. And, and, and maybe it's in the first packet. I could have more a minute ago. It's a duplicate of that. So, 
I think we're dealing with an enforcement issue, aren't we? Uh, oh, well, I haven't seen that. Yeah. Um, Again, I, I'm asking that we just pump the brakes. It's not going to hurt it. They've been out there for two years. To give them permission to do it and, and to vote it through council after they've been doing it for two years and not give us a month to look at what's truly going on out there. Again, I don't know when the EPD, and I, think, I don't know if it was EPA or EPD. I don't know when they did it, don't know what they found, don't know if the reverse. Just from November 2nd, 2017, that's when EPD. Environmental started. Protection Division, so Land they Protection Grant. They inspected it at that time, gave the clearance. Right. Yeah, yeah. When, when is the meeting, the city's meeting? February 8th, Thursday. Next week. Okay. And the bearings hearing is also next week. Okay. Mr. Turner, I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Madam, if I can direct a question to you that was brought up by the presenter, I'm just curious. Um, per the drawings, is, is, is the road coming off Tucker Road, is that is that a paved drive or is that a work drive that comes off of Tucker? And it's, it's, like, it's a gravel drive? It looks like a right, pressure run gravel. Yeah. Um, well and, and, compacted I mean, yeah. from decades of trucks going over. And the drive that on Gill Harbin is simply a dirt drive? It's a paved drive for the county that uses it, and then it's a paved or an unpaid driveway that goes off of it. So it is paved in the interest of industrial park, industrial board park? Correct. It's the county's paved driveway yeah. to their site, and this is a driveway that runs off of it. That's okay. what they use. The aerial is from 10 years ago. Um, Jason showed me an aerial of more recent times. This is what it looks like today. And, and, and I'm just, I'm, I don't Actually, see anything, in, I don't see anything in, the, in the documentation from the EPD. Again, just a question that I, I would ask you is, at the well, mm -hmm. uh, apparently, I'm sure it was inspected or whatever, but there's no type of rock bed that's, that's requested as a trailerized way of repairing. Correct. It's just down into the well and then concrete ramp coming up. And this is something, of course, that you know, the state would have to continue to monitor and enforce their permit requirements for this. Mr. Stewart, do you have an added comment? Uh, yes, that, the, the, the ingress from uh, uh, Gil Hartman and Dusty Boulevard is dirty. I got a photograph of it. It crosses the county property. It's dirt. There's a gate there. There's no fence. When you go in right by where the sign is on the um, south, west corner of the property there is a gate. If you go 20, that's not you know, on industrial. If you go on the other side of the gate, I'm probably the last person that did any fence work down there. It's been probably 35 or 40 years ago. So there's no fence there anymore. So you can drive from the industrial boulevard if they lock that gate onto the property if you just go around the gate. I mean, not. I mean, I don't know if that's important or not. But it's not. It's not a secure facility with a, with a paved driveway or asphalt that I saw, unless they did it after about 11:30 this morning. Matt, this um, permit from EPD. I'm assuming this permit was issued after the well was dug. Is that correct? I believe it was. So, I can, can give you the timing of the well. Um, city has no knowledge of them operating them for two years. Their first year is a business license request back in July, and that was to relocate from a site in Lowndes County to this property. Um, we identified right away that it needed industrial zoning. At that point in time, it was not eligible. We had conversations with the property owner. I remember driving by here for several weeks while this was going on. I couldn't tell anything was going on on the property. It looked quiet, but again, it is a small operation. Uh, code enforcement action is pending against the applicant for operating without a business license, uh, but it is pending the outcome of these applications that the applicant has turned in. I mean, the applicant and the property owner both have been very, very cooperative through this whole process. But they had to amend the future development map first, and now the zoning map Use. The DRI package was submitted to the Regional Commission and State of Georgia. They determined, which is their authority, that it does 
not trigger a DRI. And I had to make sure of that before we could go forward with any type of land use decision or permitting or licensing or anything like that. If I'm reading it correctly, this permit from EPD is permitting that well. Yes. So it has been approved by EPD. Yes. And it's functioning under the guidelines of the EPD. Correct. That well is the transfer facility, as small as it is. And I spoke with the EPD representative on the country about it to see what was required of them. And the government told me that they had no other way to classify it. Um, there was really about one or two others like this in the state where it was a truck to truck transfer. So they issued it as if it were a regular transfer facility. But of course, you know, just like all of the EPD permits, it's subject to monitoring and enforcement by the state. Yeah, you have a picture on this. Do you have a photo from Industrial Boulevard coming off that under this side? Not looking up the driveway. This is as soon as you come through what you could call the south gate enter the property at the southwest corner and this is looking north to east from that point toward the building. And you see in the foreground here that is the dirt driveway that comes through. Keep in mind under M2 zoning the city does not require pavement for heavy industry. It's purely at the engineer's discretion. City engineer's discretion. So I mean we got conflict here is is it is it a paved surface or is it dirt surface on the or on the Gill Harbin, that is a paved driveway from, that's the county's paved driveway from their public works center. You can see it here. Yeah. If, you look around, um, yeah. if you look directly above the letter E in Boulevard, that's okay. the paved driveway. But of course, soon after that, the dirt driveway was off to the right. This is the county road and then the outside of the gas station and everything. <laughs> The scale may be deceiving. I mean, this is a good distance off the Gill Harbor. Matt, excuse me. That's the view from the Gill Harbor, standing on the north side of the road, but directly across from the recycling side. And the paved driveway that goes across the county property is to the left outside the frame of the picture. Matt, do you have any idea of when the, of the uh, concrete work and all was done to make that? Uh, Doc I ramp there. I think the applicant can answer that if I had to guess, I would say October. That'd be before, yeah. yeah. Hey, Star, October. Would you stand up, please? Yeah. Can you can you confirm that that was in prior to the November second, twenty seventeen DPD report? The yeah. well the concrete yeah. well was installed. Yeah. But it hasn't been there in two years. No. Have you been using this the area to park your vehicles for two years? Uh it's about two years. Okay. Were you on site when the inspection was made? Inspection. Were you on site when the DPD came? Was it required? I don't, I don't know what they do. They said they may come down. Okay. 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 We'll do that. We'll see it at a time. I will ask one more time to anybody here with you to speak against this request. <coughs> Thank you very much. Is there any discussion on this request? Second. I have a second. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion, please say I'm ready to the right hand. That is three. All opposed, say I'm ready to the right hand. That is 
three. That is three, three. Isn't that an awesome thing right there? <laughs> I hate, I hate those ties like that. I got to put the, that the chair when I put up for Bigman also. Uh, Were you listening, Frank? Yes, I was. <laughs> and, and I would say at this point, based on what was brought in, I was probably unaware, maybe I missed this last week, that uh, the business had been going on, um, and maybe I didn't miss that in the work sense, but I, I think I would find a great with the wild motion to table it for get some more information. So now it is 4-3. Let's call that. Table. As a point of information, um, able for purposes of gathering more information, what additional information would you like to see? Uh, well, I... I'd like to know whether or not the um, information that was presented about the business being there, operating for two years is true, whether or not um, any of the other allegations about they had three trucks operating there, not just one. Um, uh, uh, we've heard testimony, you know, that there is no trash or anything or any contaminants, but here again, there was, seemed to be some uncertainty about the ability of uh, transfer of contaminants <coughs> virtue of the way that they're handling the waste work transfer from the sub into that container. Maybe a clarification of APD requirements um, and reconfirmation that they're okay with the facility. Yeah, that APD right. actually is, um, I guess, satisfying mm -hmm. that this pit serves as the transfer station and meets all the requirements for environmental protection. In fact, going forward, I'd like to, I mean, uh, Mr. Scarborough said he don't know if they actually, I believe I heard him say they didn't know if they actually came or not, but just confirmation somebody actually came because I think a valid point brought up by uh, Mr. Turner was as far as if the breeze on tires won't even come out into the dark, rather, I just, it just seemed like they'd be a rock bed at the end of that thing, just to be honest with you. But just some miscellaneous information, Matt. Okay. I'm making notes. Appreciate it. Anything else, guys, on that particular case? Good. All right, man, you did a great job as always. Jason, we'll jump right into you.